be seen in the air. What have we done for the Father and the Son? What have we done for the Father and the Son? He rose up with victory over all. All we do is crawl. and every one of us each and every one you know he does what have we done for the father and the son Father and the Son. time here we don't believe in visitors if you know Jesus we're all part of the same families amen that younger than threw the book in but but anyways we all we're all headed to the same place and I say this all the time we may not always see eye to eye amen and I don't know how many times I've said this if I had a daughter for every time I've said in here I could retire don't put your eyes on me put them on Jesus See, I'm nothing but a servant, and I'm just trying to do what he's called me, and I ain't perfect. I've told you that many times. You people that hang with me know that for a fact, and you can say amen. But I'm here to tell you something. One thing, you'll never convince me. 
You can convince me on a lot of things, but you'll never convince me I'm not called to preach. And you can say what you want to about me. And you can, and you can talk bad about a lot of things. But by God, when you go to touch God's anointed, you better be careful. You better be careful. You know, David, David could have killed Saul many times and most of the people would have clapped. But David knew that Saul was God's anointed man and it wasn't my job to take him out. Let me teach you guys something. You want to stay out of the hot water with, with God Almighty? You can entreat an elder. That's, that, that's a preacher stuff, the leaders. You can entreat us, but you can't rebuke us. If you rebuke us, you put your boxing gloves on with God. And I don't know why I'm saying that, but I'm saying it. And I'm telling you something. You know what? I love everybody that's ever been in this place. Don't get along with all of them. I'm not going to pat you on your back for living like hell. I'm going to love you, but I'm not going to pat you on your back. You know what you want to waller in your sewer? Waller in it. When you crawl out of it, I'll dry you off and love you. That's my job. Amen. Praise God. I thank you all for coming out on Friday after Thanksgiving. But I don't know no other place I'd rather be. <clears throat> Amen. I want to talk about tonight the race before you. We think as a been a Christian, <clears throat> it's a cure-all not to have no struggles. It's a false doctrine. Jesus said they'll hate you because they hated him. And when you decide to make a stand for the truth, and you've, you've been preaching as long as I've had, you've seen all types. Had all types come against me and everything else, but when all the smoke clears, I'm still standing, I'm still preaching, and the Holy Ghost is still anointed. You can't get much better than that. I used to think we could back in the day. We didn't think we didn't know better than that, but Lord God, was we wrong. But since I met Jesus, I found out something. It's not a sprint. And so many of people get saved and they start off, I mean, they're gangbusters. And they soon wear out. And then they soon get tired. And then they soon take their eyes off Jesus. Then they soon get caught up in their own drama and their own life. And then they soon sit soaking sour. Amen. That's life. That's life. Because when we get saved as Christians, it isn't about the pace. And I want you to turn with me to Colossians chapter 3 and read one verse, verse 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And the Bible says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and to the Father by Him. And life is not a sprint, but it's an endurance race. And what happens, you get caught up in one of two or three things, actually. And the worst one, I think, is getting caught up in me, yourself. Get caught up, it's all about me. It's got to be about me. I got to have all the tension. I got to have all the pats on the back. I got to have all the grease. Because I just fly apart as soon as I don't get it. How many of you ever met somebody like that? Amen. If you sit beside somebody like that, for God's sake, don't poke them. Don't get in a fight in here. But I'm here to tell you that, that as a Christian, you're going to be tempted, you're going to be tried, you're going to be victorious, and you're going to fail at times. We're human beings. We All God's got to use is imperfect people. Now, I know that's going to make someone have to get off the high horse, but that's all he's got is imperfect people because the flesh that we walk around in is sinful by nature. From the first Adam, read the Bible. Because the first Adam sinned, we have all sinned. And you don't believe you don't, won't make a mistake. I always tell people this. I worked construction for 30 years. You take a 30-ounce east wing hammer and let me catch your thumb. You, you on page with me? You ain't always safe. <laughs> that sanctification sidesteps and words coming out of your mouth. Because until you've done it, let me tell you something. But we as Christians, 
We are tried. And we go through things <clears throat> not because God's mad at us or God don't like the way we're living, and a lot of times he don't. But we're going through things as part of a process of maturing us to be the types of Christians that God wants us to be. You know, you put metal through fire. Gold goes through fire not to make it pretty, to make it pure. And we sometimes got to go through the fire to get purified because, see, getting saved is getting saved. But getting close to God, there's got to be more things to fall off from us that's what's on us. Are you listening to me? You're forgiven of your sins because the Bible says we confess from mouth, believe in the heart. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and give us a gift of eternal life. And But that's the starting point. But to get close to God, it's not so simple. You've got to be willing to get rid of some things in your life because we as, as human beings, we have so many false gods in our lives and don't even realize it. Some of us got gods of Harleys. I think Cahill was delivered his this week. Where's he at? He left. Yeah, if you've seen his post, it's, he brought a brand new, well, not a brand new Harley, new to him, but it wouldn't start the other day. He was ready for deliverance. I wish he was in here, but I'm still going to get them three pictures. Things go wrong in our lives, but that's, God has not given up on us. And when you falter and fail, the worst thing you can do is quit because you faltered and failed. Because it's an endurance race. You, I know people get saved. They're all full of fire. and They're, they're all excited. And, and, and they're just running wide open. But the problem with that, one, you ain't got no direction in your life. So you're like a ping pong ball in a ping pong machine. Kabing, kabing, kabing. And you're going everywhere until finally you realize, I'm just bouncing off everything because I don't know nothing. Nothing wrong with that. Because let me explain this to you. I'm going to preach here in a minute. I say this all the time because it's the only thing I know to make you understand where you're at. A newborn baby, all a newborn baby, we got several of them around here, all they know is survival. You know, you get the picture. I know I shouldn't have done the second one. Get over it. They all do it, though. Let me tell you something. All the way up to 18 years old. He ain't listening. He's talking. But anyways, but when they, they become adolescents, it's all about self. It's all about me. Me, me, me. How many of you are having teenagers in your house? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Mom and dad don't know nothing. I mean, it's all about me, what I can get for me, what, what's good for me. Well, I don't care about nobody else as long as I get mine. But adulthood, it's about reproducing. And as a Christian, it's about reproducing. In other words, it's about us being ministers of the gospel. You may not be a preacher, but we're all ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ to share a message of hope for those that are lost and undone. But if you're at the self-centered part, that adolescent stage, all about you, God can't use you. The pastor can't use you. Matter of fact, nobody can use you because when you're at that adolescent stage, if we'll be truthful with each other, now, some of us live beyond 17 more than once. So, be a little truth, but if you can remember when we were 17, we was the same way. I like to know, I tell my kids, I wish I knew now at 55 what I thought I knew at 17. I'd be a smart human being. But, but the thing of it is, we, we as Christians are going through a, a process of maturing to be, be the Christians that God wants us to be. And not only wants us, but what God needs us to be your process may be a little different from mine because he don't want another Mike Price and everybody says but he needs you God saves you for who you are for what he needs he don't need another Billy Graham and he's my favorite preacher in the world he don't need it but he needed a Mike Price and he needs you so this process of this race that we're going through Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. And you, you're going to think I'm lost my mind to read this verse, but it's going to come into reaction here in a minute. Hebrews 12, verse 1, I'm reading from the NIV. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us then, let us throw off everything that hinders 
and the sin that easily entangles us mm, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now listen, what I'm talking about here is getting us the outreach church, the, the, the layman's job in the end time harvest is what I'm talking about here, this race. See, we have the authority to lay things down. Well, it's going to mess some of you up. Oh, I've been struggling with this same thing. No, you ain't. You've been holding on to the same thing. Two different doctrines. You ain't struggled with nothing. Because if you want to lay it down, you'll lay it down. Amen. Let me prove it. If I get a big old rattlesnake throat in your lap, are you going to struggle or you going to get rid of it? Good example, ain't it, right? You're going to get rid of that thing because you ain't going to want to struggle with it. The more you struggle with it, the more it's going to bite you. But the same thing with sin in our lives. We claim that we're trying to lay it down, but the reality, we keep holding on, holding on, holding on. And the only person that you're fooling is yourself. You're the one that's stuck in the middle with your sins and your love for your sins. And you wonder why God can't use you. Because when you mature as a child of God, just as a teenager begins to mature into manhood or womanhood, you have to put away the Barbie dolls and the G.I. Joes. Sooner or later, you got to lay down the little toys and take ownership of your life to mature. As a Christian, sometime along the walk that you're walking, this race that we're in, we have to lay down some things and begin to be the men and women of God that we're supposed to be. Quit using sin as an excuse why you can't do it because the only thing you're holding on to isn't Jesus. It's the sins that easily entangle you that hold you back from what God has for you. His heart desire is to bless every one of us. But he, how many of you know he won't bless a mess? He's not going to bless what you're doing when it's not of him. But we as Christians, we've been sold so many Tom Sawyer messages in America and we've whitewashed sin that it's cool to have sin in your life. Boy, this ain't going over, is it? But I'm going to preach it anyway. Hallelujah. Because, see, when you look in that mirror and you look at yourself, you don't see the devil. You don't see the pastor. You don't see what else you've been doing. What you see is yourself in the condition that you hold on to. Mm. Y'all ain't helping me. It's all right, just go with it. I'm going to go. See, we like to quote, greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. But if we truly believe that, then that addiction, that bad attitude, that wicked mouth some of you got, or whatever your problem is, and I did say that, thank you, that, that you would get in that mirror and you'd repent in front of that mirror. God, help me to break this wicked tongue and help me control my jaws. They ain't help me, snake. They must be all Raiders fans. But let me tell you something. They wear a helmet of bad, but they can't sink a, 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 a little ball in a puddle of water. I mean, never mind, never mind. I ain't should go there. Listen, we as Christians, we have the authority to be what God wants us to be. But we also have the right to be what we are. Are you listening to me? How many of you know the Holy Ghost is a gentleman? Read the book. He's a gentleman. In other words, he's not going to force you to be anything. I used to hear prayers in the church I grew up as a kid. This is the reason I stayed out of church, because of what they prayed. God, save them, move them out of the way, or kill them. I said, God, I ain't going back to that church. <laughs> I knew how I lived. Man, I ain't hanging around people that pray for me to die. I mean, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm on will of court. But the fact of it is, the reality of that statement, we control, and I hate using this word, this word because it gets, into, it gets into all different kind of theologies of 
feel good theologies gets into motivational speakers, but it's still a true statement. We control our destinies by our spoken word, by what we hold on to, and by what we believe. If you believe that what you are is all you ever going to be, then Bubba and Bubba, that's all you ever going to be. But if you believe that you're going to run this race and you're going to run it with your eyes focused on Jesus, you're going to be led of the Holy Spirit, you're going to read his word and ask God to give you the wisdom of his word, you're going to strive to be more like him and less like Mike Price and less like you, that you're going to keep your eyes on the high calling of Jesus Christ, you'll endure to the end, and when you get there, you're going to see that you was nothing like you was when you started. Are you listening to me? But you've got to get focused upon some things. Now let me read something to you real quick. Track star Jesse Owens. How many remember him? Anybody remember Jesse Owens? I don't usually quote stuff from people that's, but he had a great quote. We all have dreams, but in order to make dreams come into reality, it takes an awful lot of determination and self-discipline and effort. That's good. I want to read it one more time. I don't think so. I want to read it one more time. This is good stuff. Track star Jesse Owens. Y'all remember Jesse Owens? He ran in front of a guy that absolutely hated black people. And he couldn't stand that this guy outran all his white boys. He couldn't stand it. This is history. But Jesse Owens says, We all have dreams, but in order to make dreams come into reality, did you hear? In order to make dreams come into reality, in other words, you ain't going to sit and wait on it. It just ain't going to show up. You've got to make something happen. It takes an awful lot of determination and self-discipline and effort. Now, discipline in church is a bad word because discipline means, in a nutshell, shut up or put up. I heard that in the Marine Corps boot camp. <laughs> and really, really, that's an essence of the word. Don't talk the fight. Don't just sing about it, but walk the walk and do it. See, Mother Mary's the one come out with the phrase, just do it, not Nike. Don't be the saved. She looked at the disciples, whatsoever Jesus said, just do it. Read your King James Version. Hey, matter of fact, we were to sue Nike and get a bunch of money for the church. What do you think? She said it first. But here we, here we go. If we, and this is my statement, if we don't demand something of ourselves, We'll never be in demand in the kingdom world because you don't think the king is going to look down into his soldiers and see someone set soaking and sour and miserable and don't want to read, don't want to pray, and don't want to live right, and he's got somebody else over here in the corner that's seeking after God early in the morning, trying to live the best of their ability and trying to chase after God. Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, send me. I've been running this race. I may not be the fastest, but I've got my focus up on you, Lord. And see, those sprinters at many times, they drift off. But see, a lot of things what made Jesse Owens so good, when you read about this guy, interesting guy to read about. He knew everybody would push as hard as they could coming off the blocks. He pushed hard. But he said it was the second motion that got you because they push so hard coming off all you're doing is pushing off he got off in a steady rhythm to take that second motion which got his stride going it wasn't the push off got his stride it was the next step and from that step to the next one he was in rhythm and he kept focused up on the race everybody was taught back in the day that this is history go back and study it they taught these guys to push off to push off but Jesse understood, if I use all I got pushing off, I don't have nothing really to sprint with. That's good stuff you listen to me you put over into the spiritual world. We all get in the altar of God and we preach and we push off, but it's an endurance race. It don't do no, I don't care how fast you get it, you all get saved at the same pace. 
Lord, forgive me. I'm guilty. God, I like the old country song. It's me again, Lord. I mean, come on. Every one of us have been there. But that's not, that's very important. But that part don't finish your race. You've got to run your race. And God is keeping account how you're running the race. Some of you are carrying yesterday's failures. Some of you are carrying doubt that you can't complete it. Some of you are carrying fears of you might not make it. Some of you are carrying all kind of junk that you just need to let go. Because you know what? If I let everything ever said about me burden me down, if I carried everything that's been said about me way up on my shoulders, I would crumble. Oh, it gets through at times, but it don't take me long to shake it off. Why? Because my eyes is on Jesus. My eyes is on that prize called Jesus Christ. My focus is doing what he called me to do. And when you get your focus on doing what God calls you to do, it really won't matter what anybody else thinks. Boy, some of y'all getting this. Some of you look at me. I'm preaching mean. I'm not preaching mean. I'm trying to get you to understand this endurance race that you're running. Take a cross-country runner. When I was in high, high school, I was a one-track, one-time-around lap runner. That's all I had, and I was done after that. Sometimes I was done before I got around the last turn to get there. Our quarterback and our halfback, and I was a fullback, we finished one, two, and three all the time, every race. And my coach said, and my dad even asked one, he said, you can't beat them too? No. And dad said, why? I said, they're faster than me. And dad asked me, he said, what's your kick like? Well, dad, I never kicked nobody, so I don't know. <laughs> Didn't have enough sense to know. There's that inner determination. When you come off that last turn and the prize is in sight, you're hurting, you're winded, you're sucking air, you're sweating like crazy, you can't see, you're focusing, you're not really hearing nothing regardless of what the crowd is doing. And you see that finish line, the good runners, at, they've been, they paced themselves all the way around that track, but then that last kick, when things are the hardest, things are the worst, when you're hurting and you're thirsty and you're wanting to crumble and fail, but those that win push through because they read the book, those that endure to the end shall be saved and they push on because they know the prize is just beyond that line ahead of them. Oh, you listen to me tonight. So many of your victories, so many of your blessings, so many of God's healings are just in sight, but you give up right before you get to them. This is a good preacher to you. I don't like it or not. Amen. Well, let me, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. I love this other thing. This is from Jesse Owens. The battles that count aren't the ones for gold medals. The struggles within yourself, the invisible and inedible, 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 I can't get it out. Say it out loud, somebody. Thank you. Battles inside all of us that's where it at. Now let me preach this. Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of, the, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Our battle literally is in our spoken word of our faith. Now let me say something about faith. I've yet to preach the whole sermon down here. But faith is voice activated. You can just have, say you have faith. But saying you have faith don't mean nothing unless you activate your faith. Your faith is this. Your faith is this. When, when you see this up here, and this is where you're headed. Either you, you look at where I'm too sick, I'm too tired, I'm too broke. I'm too hurt, I'm too disgusted, I'm too this, I'm too that. Well, you spoke your demise. But if your voice activates your faith, I'm going to have what God says I can have. And I'm not letting go until I get what I come for. Yeah. 
My oldest daughter, Jessica, she's got a tumor behind one eye, and they think it's cancer. She's got a disc in her neck that's got to come out all in the same surgery. Her husband is legally blind now at 38 years old. They've lost all that they have. And she told me, I'm not even distressed about all this because I know God's got it. And, I, and my, my heart and my prayer is this as a daddy. God, as she activated her voice by saying, I know you got it. See, when we see things, we have to proclaim our healing. What makes you think that you can, you, without saying, I believe, Lord, that you get saved? No, what makes you think you ain't going to get your healing without speaking it? That's good preaching. You know, we confess he's Lord. We confess he's our Savior. We confess he's our King. But why? But you think you're going to get healed without professing it? Yes, Lord, I claim my healing. I believe my healing. I believe by them stripes I'm set free. I'm not settling down for what the doctor says they can't fix it. I believe in Jesus is going to fix it. You have to voice activate your faith. Because when you put words to your faith, the devil takes notice. But when the devil takes notice, God's done heard it. Y'all ain't getting that part. When the devil hears you activate your faith, it's already landed on the lap of God. Oh, my God. If we only understood that this is not a sprint, but it's an endurance race. But this race is what we're supposed to drop stuff off on. The children of Israel, the children of Israel, they wandered around. 40 years. Why? They had to get doubt out of the way. That's it in a nutshell. They had to get the unbelief out of the way. I don't know how old most of you guys are. I know most of you is a lot older than I am, but... I didn't get no amens on that one. <laughs> No help, Sherman. <laughs> Shaking his hand up. <laughs> we don't have jet 40 years. Because as forgetful as I am now at 95, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be preaching about. <laughs> Where's the church? But if we don't start activating our voices now, our faith, and start believing, and when you not only activate your voice, you, you activate your faith by your voice, you have to release those things that you're holding on to. Let me explain it this way. If I've got 300 pounds sitting on my shoulder and the devil says, God ain't going to take it off of you, I might be able to carry that 300 pounds while I'm a young man. Yeah. But then you get in mid-age. You don't want 100 pounds on your shoulders. And then you get older, you don't want nothing on your shoulders. But what happens between now and that time that you don't get rid of the 300 pounds? You get in middle age and it begins to just completely crush you. And you've carried it your whole life till you're up in age and you can't even get out from under it then. But you had the power all along to break free from it. I'm not trying to be mean tonight or make light of some of the stuff you're going through. I'm trying to let you get delivered and set free by your own voice. I don't mind praying for people. I really don't. But until we activate our own faith and believe the Word of God for what it says, all I'm doing is putting a Band-Aid on your bad situation. Because I'll pray for you, and you may get goosebumps, or you may cry, but when you walk from here, back to wherever you sit and walk out these doors and pick that thing right back up. 
I'm in some people's living rooms tonight, man. And I'm not trying to be mean, but I want you to experience the fullness of the love of Jesus Christ and the experience of being set free. I've had some of my old brothers, well, how'd you get set free from drugs? I believed a man. Who was it? Jesus. Well, how did you believe him? I just believed him. I can't say how. How'd you get, how, how'd you get out of this? How, how come you're able to smile when all you've been through? Because of Jesus. Well, what'd he do for you? He set me free. Well, how come God restored your life? Because of Jesus. I just believed him. And then he put somebody in my life that believes Jesus. And now it's two of us believing Jesus. And we walk in prosperity and peace. We walk in holiness. We walk in blessings of God. And Acts 10, 34, God has no respect or person. If he'll do it for Stephanie and I, he'll do it for you. But you've got to voice, activate your faith, and then you've got to release the garbage and the crap that you're holding on to. And I said it the way I wanted to. He don't allow the preacher to take it off of you. You have to lay it down. We need to learn that song, lay it down, but need to breathe. Where's Jeff? There he's back there. We need a light back there to shine on him. We, sorry, brother. I couldn't let that go. Need to breathe. Lay it down. You'll love the song. We need that. I'm talking about if we as Christians, I'm done preaching now. We as Christians will learn to lay it down after activating your voice. Then guess what, guys? You would have the desires of your heart. You'd have peace in your homes. You, you, everything you touch, and, and the, your friends and your family say, you're blessed beyond measure. And people always ask me, how do you know you're doing what God wants you to? Because everything I'm touching is blessed. Of course, my wife told me to quit touching my belly, but, you know. In my next, my next go around as a preacher, I'm going to be a Santa Claus preacher. <laughs> but it's the race you're running. It shouldn't be a battle. Oh, some say, oh, yeah, we wrestled. You said that. Yeah, spiritually. And that's activated by your voice. But if you find yourself physically tied up in it, somewhere along the line, you missed the picture. I'm not in a physical fight with nobody. I'm not in a wrestling, physical wrestling match with nobody. They may be with me, but God bless them. They're still standing in the ring that I've long since passed. Maybe the ref will tell them they need to get out of the ring. I got some else coming. But we as Christians, we are the most powerful people upon this earth because of our faith. If your voice activated, the host of heaven will move on your behalf. You don't know the power you have at your voice. You're not some adopted kid that don't know who your parents are. My dad is the king of glory. He's the God of gods. There's no other God before him or above him. He is it. All powers, all people, all, all fake gods, everything else, everything that's alive is going to bow to my daddy. And I get to raise my hands and cry out, holy, holy, holy is my daddy. That can be you. That can be you. I'm going to close with this. The second time I'm closing, I know. It's all right. You'll like this one. Bill Price, my daddy, was a big guy. And this teenager was a lot bigger than I took my bicycle. Well, I really wasn't scared, but I really didn't want to get my butt whooped. So I said, well, you have the bike. I'm going to get my daddy. 
took off running. I come barreling up in that farmhouse I lived in. Dad, Dad, so-and-so took my bike. Here comes my dad. We got back. My bike was sitting. I don't know how he had time to wax it, clean the wheels. It was brand new. But he wiped everything off. Because <laughs> they knew who my daddy was. And all the kids in the neighborhood, their daddies knew my daddy. said, you believe that boy alone? His daddy would kill all of us. I was Bill Price's boy. You don't fool with this little boy. Even if I did start it, he'd bail me out. I might tear my butt up later, but he'd come get me out of trouble when I was a kid. Become a man, I'd just sit there and ride it. But, but my earthly father would do that for me. How much more were our heavenly father that loves us way more than what my daddy could ever understood? How much more he'll forgive us and, and, and he wants us to have everything. Don't you think more of yourself than a bird? What's the Bible say about that? They don't work for the food. They don't labor. They don't do nothing, but yet he feeds them. He's got them nice feathers to keep them warm and all this stuff. He cares for them and how much more he loves us. And we worry about our tomorrows because what we're hanging on to today is why we worry about tomorrow. And if you just let it go, leave it alone. Let it go. See, people think someone's talking about you. Well, let me tell you something, how this works. At 20 years old, you're worried to death about somebody talking about you. Then you get 40 years old, you're honorary. You don't care who talks about you. And then you turn 60 years old, and you find out ain't nobody never talked about you. So you spent 60 years worried about it. It's just like carrying some of the burdens and some of the junk some of you are carrying. Let it go. Why well, don't want? Let them go. Everybody is around you ain't for you. Learn to get the spirit of discernment so you know who you're hanging out. If people that's close to me don't pray in the name of Jesus, or they don't believe in the name of Jesus, I'll love them, but they ain't going to stay in my house to plant a seed of doubt, fear, and unbelief and confusion. They ain't even coming in. Well, preacher, you're supposed to love them. I do love them, but I'm not loving them in my house to destroy my peace. I'm not going to pick up that stuff. Discernment. I'm done. God, give, give God some praise and glory. Lord, we love you and we praise you, Lord. God, I, I preach what you laid on my heart tonight. God, let, them, let this word take take root in their hearts and their minds and God give them a bit of vision what I've preached to see that God that they have the authority to lay this stuff down to rebuke it to flee from it to walk away from it so they can walk in peace and holiness Lord they can walk blessed above all men they can walk blessed in their marriage they can walk blessed in every aspect of their life God God make it real to them tonight Lord Father I thank you Lord for all that you've done and what you're about to do in this place God we praise you for what this Christmas season that's upon us, Lord. God, I pray for the ones that don't have, Lord God, that we'll reach out again in this community, God. And Father, I'm asking you, Father, right now to draw each one of us closer to you, O oh God. God, give us a heart and compassion for the lost, for the hurting. God, give us a heart and compassion for the weak. God, give us a heart and compassion to do your will. Because the race, really, is what it's about, doing your will. And that, that you've called us to do, God. Start with me as the pastor, God. Teach me to lead in a way that they can understand, Father. And God, I'm asking you, Lord God, to, to each person in here, God, I speak blessings, no curses upon their lives, God. Break the curses that they spoke upon their own life in anger, God. Break those curses, God, that they will not take seed and prosper in their lives, Lord. Break those curses, God. But God, I bless them, Lord, with your love, your peace, and your understanding, God. I bless them, Lord God, that they'll walk under your, your grace and your mercy and joy and your love, God, every day of their life, because we are blessed. We are your children. In the name of Jesus.